Okay, so the last talk uh, of this uh, post-deadline session is entitled Towards 400 Gigabase Four-Lane Solution Using Direct Detection of a Multicap Signal in 14 Gigahertz Bandwidth Per Lane. A uh, paper will be given by Dr. Iglesias Olmedo. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Miguel Iglesias Olmedo. I am a research assistant in the Metro Access and Short Range Communications Group led by Professor Idafonso Tafur Monroy. Um, this is a group in the Technical University of Denmark, the Department of Photonics, also known as DTU Photonique. Um, today I'm here to present a paper which is a product of a joint collaboration with the Transmission Technology Research Department of Huawei Technologies in Shenzhen. The outline of my talk, it's uh, pretty classic. Uh, there are no big surprises except for the fact that I will be giving it backwards. I'll start with the conclusions, back them up with the results, uh, we'll explain the experimental setup, uh, tell what is this multicap thing, uh, position it into the state of the art, and finish with some introduction. So, concluding this presentation, we have done 100 gigabit per second over 10 kilometers in a single lane and polarization. We have achieved that uh, by using a high-speed DAC, a O-band externally modulated laser, and a new novel uh, modulation approach we like to call multicap. By extending these results to four lanes, you will get yourself a 400G transceiver. Now, I know there's a lot more to Ethernet naming uh, in, when it comes to standards, but I think our results would fit very well with this uh, standard name. In addition, each of the lanes, um, uh, we've measured a 3 dB point uh, of bandwidth of 14 gigahertz per lane, which uh, uh, means that you can, in theory, take a next generation 100G transceiver uh, based on the 4 times 25G compatible and make it 400G with a little bit of added complexity. Now, I'm not making this up. Here are some results. In this plot, you can see a uh, uh, bit error rate versus the received optical power. Uh, there are three things I would like you to notice here. First, there is no observed dispersion penalty between uh, back to back two kilometers and 15 kilometers standard single, for single mode uh, fiber. Second, uh, the 3dB, uh, the, the, the sensitivity of the photodiode is located at minus 3dBm. Uh, this is, might seem quite high, but as you can observe, we don't start with a very decent electrical back-to-back uh, -back signal. <coughs> and this is, in fact, because it's quite challenging to, to squeeze uh, 100 gigabit per second in a 14 gigahertz uh, bandwidth signal. In this plot, you can observe this blue line, which looks like a roller caster. This is the free, uh, measured frequency response of the end-to-end -end, uh, lane. Uh, the red uh, uh, line is a regression of this uh, uh, curve that we have used to uh, identify where the 3 dB point is, and it's identified in 14 gigahertz. And the background gray signal is our multicap signal pre-emphasized that we feed into uh, the DAC. Now, so what is this channel with 14 gigahertz? What is it composed of? Well, it's composed of a 64 gig samples DAC which uh, outputs the 100 gig uh, gigabit per second signal that we amplify to two volts peak to peak. After biasing, we drive, it to, uh, we drive the, EM, uh, the externally modulated laser with it, which outputs 5 dBm op optical power. After 15 kilometer single mode fiber, we get minus 2 dBm uh, before the photodiode. This is then amplified with a uh, dif differential limiting amplifier, and catch it with a, a digital storage oscilloscope at 80 giga samples per second. So what is this signal that we introduce into the DAC and that carries this 100 gigabits per second? This signal is a multi-cap signal, which is based on carrierless uh, amplitude phase modulator. So if we were to do a carrierless phase amplitude uh, signal uh, carrying 100 gig, you would have to start with two four-pump signals at 25 gigabout. You have to filter them with orthogonal filters, and then you'll get these little funny eye diagrams, eye diagrams with fairly close horizontal uh, eye opening. Now, the frequency sp uh, spectrum looks like this. First thing you don't like to see there is this wasted bandwidth at the beginning of the signal, which doesn't really fit with the 
devices that we have available. You can easily remove that by uh, adjusting the uh, frequencies of the sine and cosines that make up for the filters in the, in, in the cap signal. However, another challenging problem is uh, these very flat spectral components of this uh, cap signal. Actually, the frequency response of the channel should be as flat as this signal if we want to make it uh, to, the, to the receiver. The solution to this is divide and conquer. If we break the, uh, the cap signal into different bands, we, uh, we can spot uh, uh, directly five advantages. First, um, you can use power loading to pre-emphasize your signal. Second, you can use bit loading to fit the, uh, the, the modulation order according to the SNR at the given frequency. Third, each of the bands is running at four gigabyte, which severely reduces the requirements of your electronic devices. Um, and uh, four, uh, you are effectively decoupling the number of electrical interfaces from the number of optical lines, which I think it gives you a very flexible transceiver. Okay, so now it's story time. Uh, six months ago, when I graduated from my master thesis, uh, I was hired by Professor Delfonso, and uh, he told me, well, we have this really nice project. All you have to do is a 400G transceiver in four lines for client-side optics. It means no coherent, no, no EDFAs. All you have to use is direct detection. Uh, we would like it to be this big, so it fits with next generation CS CFP2+. Plus. Uh, don't put too many active electronics because we don't like it to, to heat too much. And uh, well, there, there you go. So I started looking at what the state of the art is on this thing and I was very lucky that I had a colleague uh, from our department who had a posted line paper last year at OFC. He managed to get, uh, to get a, hundred, a 50 gigabit per second signal, uh, which after polarization multiplexing he would get to 100, but that would effectively get, uh, require two lanes. So this was a very nice and simple solution, but didn't make it to the 100G per lane. We looked at CAP from Cambridge, also a uh, really impressive contribution last, last uh, OFC. This gives 40 gigabit per second in 10 gigahertz bandwidth. However, we, as I mentioned before, I tried to extend it to 100G and we couldn't make it work. DMT, exciting, promising, them too complex and didn't make it. Half cycle, that was actually an eye-opening. The fact that uh, I didn't know that you could use uh, um, a frequency of your carrier lower than your baud rate. This was my inspiration to get the sines and cosines frequencies of the filters that make up for the cap signal lower than your baud rate and it's in, in fact um, save this wasted uh, bandwidth that you get at the beginning. By extending this uh, into different uh, bands, uh, we, we get the benefits from DMT, which is the bit loading and power loading, and we disregard the complexity with FFT, IFFT, adaptive uh, equalization based on the pilot tones and framing, etc. And uh, we are also using cap signals, so we are gaining the ability of, of, of uh, transmitting two channels at the same time. And since at the end what you are doing is receiving a bunch of multi-level amplitude signals, your sensitivity is going to be qu quite close as well. This allows us to push the state of the art further, and uh, well, here we are, and uh, very glad to be. So a little more on the introduction and the motivation. I took the liberty to plot the market, uh, uh, well, the market penetration of 10, 40, and 100G cards into data centers. I took this information from Intel and Broadcom report. And uh, what you see in this plot is a, in the y-axis, the gigabit per second or gigahertz, depending on the, on the line. And the, the, the orange lines, orange lines is, the, is the, the market penetration of this uh, 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 10, 40, and 100G cards. And the blue line is the bandwidth available that I have, been, uh, for, uh, take, I have taken the pixel as a reference because they kind of rule the, the, the datacom world. And what we see here is two very different trends. While one is exponential, the other one is linear. If we, go, if we look into 10 years ahead, this doesn't get any prettier. If we could rely on the same big cell technology as today, by 2013, we're going to have to get 1.6 terabit per second in a 100 gigahertz big cell. So why am I doing weird, crazy, carrierless, multi-bat signals? Be because we need it. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Question, please. Interesting presentation. So, um, the question is the number of bands. Why six? Um, is that optimized? Uh, there was a lot of trial and error. Uh, actually, there was uh, the, the 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 response of the channel had some spikes and some yeah. some, some artifacts, mm -hmm. but they, they could come from the DAC or from the DSO. We had to kind of avoid them. So we had to choose the number of bands so that we could get the hundred G out of them. Some, sometimes we would put a band right in the middle of a deep and it would destroy this band. Therefore, we try to come up with a solution in which those deeps wouldn't actually fall, would fall in, be, in between holes of, of, of each of the, of the bands. This is the reason why we use six, six bands. Okay, so uh, you mean that the optimum number of bands depends on the system channel response, right? Yes. Okay. In fact, it can be... Uh, changed uh, mm -hmm. to the necessities of or, or, the, or the frequency response of, of the channel. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, please. Uh, nice work also. Since you showed the CFP2, do you have an idea of the power consumption of, the, uh, of your scheme? Uh, we did not make studies on, on, on the power consumption aspect, uh, but we are taking these studies in, in the next uh, experiment, which uh, should be coming up pretty soon, and uh, actually uh, they will be also with a pixel. So we are uh, looking into this for, for, for our next version of this, of this uh, uh, approach. Thank you. We can take one more question. Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker again.